Hello, this is John Wettenkamp with the National Weather Service Office in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and here's a look at your first 2020 spring flood outlook. The main message for this year is that there is a well above normal risk for spring flooding along the main stem of the Mississippi River, while the Mississippi tributaries have an above normal risk. However, that is variable with the risk higher and lower in areas. Contributing factors to this year's enhanced potential for spring flooding include high river levels, and that is due to repeated rounds of heavy precipitation over the last year and even over the last few months. High soil moisture because of the repeated rounds of precipitation. And also there is deep snowpack in place, especially in northern areas of Minnesota and Wisconsin. It is important to remember that this forecast depends heavily on future precipitation and temperature trends. So the conditions over the next several weeks will be key in determining how the flooding situation evolves this spring. So let's take a look at the average stream flow. This is looking at the month of January across the upper Mississippi River Basin. The image on the right shows all of the basins for the upper Mississippi River Basin area. The blue shading are areas where there was a greater than 90th percentile flow rate for those basins. And the black areas are where the, some of the highest flows were observed in the database history. So in summary, much above normal stream flow, especially across northern Iowa, most of Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And one of the large contributing factors to these higher stream flows and the wet soil conditions are the repeated rounds of heavy rain. So let's look back at soil moisture conditions in February 2019. This is for surface soil moisture. And we're looking at wetness percentiles. And the blue shaded areas are areas where there was a 95, 95th percentile or greater values observed. So back in February 2019, areas across northern Iowa and southern Wisconsin were seeing uh, very high soil moisture anomalies. Now let's fast forward to this year, February 2020, and this is the image on the right. Uh, there's much more blue showing up. So all those areas uh, where you see the darker blues are where, again, that's where there is a 95th percentile or higher uh, ranking. Uh, looking back historically at the years 1948 through 2009, so these are very high soil moisture values, so likely any snowmelt or additional rainfall will run off quickly. And not shown here, uh, there is variable frost depth across the region uh, due to the early onset of snowpack, and we really haven't seen prolonged cold this year. However, with these wet soil conditions, uh, anticipate runoff with snowmelt and future precipitation in the form of rainfall. So snowfall rates so far this year, or snowfall so far this year, uh, we saw above normal snowfall in northern areas. Uh, that includes northern Wisconsin into northern Minnesota and near normal snowfall closer to the Interstate 90 corridor and south into Iowa and northern Illinois. So one of the important factors in the snowpack is knowing how much liquid is within that snowpack uh, so we can anticipate uh, how much uh, wa water could potentially make it into rivers and streams after the snowmelt this spring. There is a high water content in the snowpack across northern Minnesota and northern Wisconsin where there's three to six inches plus of liquid in that snowpack. And uh, working further south, closer to the Interstate 90 corridor, there's around one to two inches of liquid in that snowpack and then amounts uh, taper off to less than an inch uh, into northern Iowa and into far southern Wisconsin. However, we still have a ways to go yet before we're out of the snow season, so we could add to this uh, significantly uh, through the month of February and even into the month of March uh, before the melt begins. So looking at the 8 to 14 day outlook that we'll be covering February 21st through 27th, the image on the left shows the probability of above near normal or below normal temperatures in the image on the right 
is precipitation, and again, a, the probability for above normal or below normal. So going back to the left, looking across the upper Midwest and upper Mississippi River Basin, there is a fairly strong signal for above normal temperatures as we go into the end of February. For precipitation, uh, we're not seeing any signals in the long-term models to favor above or below normal precipitation during this time frame. So let's look out a little bit further, February, March, April. Again, we're looking at temperatures on the left and precipitation on the right. And again, these are signals for above, normal, or below normal. And for temperatures across the upper Midwest, including the upper Mississippi River Basin, there is a fairly strong signal for below normal temperatures for this period. Uh, even though the, the end of February could be warmer, there are signals that point to potentially colder than normal temperatures as we get into the March and April time frame. And for precipitation tr uh, trends in the long-term models, we're seeing a signal for above normal precipitation. And locally, it's just a, a real uh, low signal, but it's there um, that we could see above normal precipitation for the period February through April. And again, the majority of that would likely be in the March-April time frame. So now let's look ahead to the long-range probabilities for flooding potential across the region. The squares on the image on the left, those are forecast points uh, in, in river gauges across the area, and the color indicates what the probability is, uh, is it, uh, the probability is of great, uh, and the probability shown here is greater than 50 percent for uh, minor, moderate, or major flooding. If there's a less than a 50 percent chance for any of those categories, then the boxes are green. So one of the biggest concerns here uh, as we go into the spring snow melt is a well above normal risk for flooding along the main stem of the Mississippi River. And th those are all of the purple and red boxes that you see there. So as a, there is a greater than 50% chance of moderate flooding. So it's a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty safe bet that we'll at least see some minor flooding along the Mississippi River uh, just due to how high the river levels have been and the deep snowpack in the headwaters of the Mississippi. However, moderate and major flooding is a little more uncertain, uh, but we'll have to keep a very close eye on that as we go into the spring months. So just be prepared for the potential to see um, flooding along the Mississippi River and at least minor flooding, possibly higher. Looking across the tributaries to the Mississippi River, across southeast Minnesota and northeast Iowa, there is a variable flood risk in these areas. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the uh, probab probabilities for those forecast points range from uh, less than 50% chance of flooding to uh, greater than 50% uh, chance of moderate flooding. So variable across these areas, and much of that is due uh, to the snowpack across the area. Looking across western and the central Wisconsin, a little, high, little higher risk for flooding in those areas uh, and above normal risk in these areas, uh, especially for rivers such as the Black River, uh, the Wisconsin River. There's a lot of liquid in the snowpack in the headwaters of the Wisconsin, so we'll be, we'll be watching that very closely. And there also is a signal for uh, above normal uh, chance for flooding on the Kickapoo River in southwest Wisconsin. So in summary, there are high probabilities for at least minor flooding at many locations this year. The main stem of the Mississippi River currently has the highest chances for minor to moderate flooding. Uh, and there even is the potential for major flooding at some locations, but uh, it's a little hard to, um, to pinpoint exactly uh, how high the rivers could get. Uh, are they going to get into the major flood category? That, that's an unknown at this point, uh, but there are signals there in the long-term models that suggest that. So, so please keep a close eye on the situation here uh, as we go through February and uh, into March and get into the spring snow melt. So I just want to stress again that the risk depends on future precipitation and temperature trends, and the conditions over the next several weeks will be key in determining how the flooding situation evolves this spring. There will be two more issuances of the spring flood outlook. The next update will be on Thursday, February 27th, with a third outlook scheduled for Thursday, March 12th. So please continue to monitor later forecasts and information from the National Weather Service.
and we'll keep you updated on the potential flooding for this spring. And we do have a website set up for additional information and we'll keep that updated all the way through the spring snowmelt. You can find that site at weather.gov slash lacrosse 2020 flood outlook. Thanks for watching. For additional information, you can check out our homepage anytime at weather.gov slash lacrosse or see us on social media. Thank you.